Avengers Endgame it shattered box office records with estimated ticket sales of $350 million domestically and $1.2 billion globally this past weekend. 2020 presidential candidate Bernie Sanders has his own take on Disney's success, tweeting this. What would be truly heroic is if Disney used its profits from Avengers to pay all of its workers a middle class wage instead of paying its CEO, Bob Iger, 65.6 million over 1,400 times as much as the average worker at Disney makes. Joining us with her reaction to the senator's lip, uh, logic is Maddie Duffler, mm -hmm. the senior fellow at National Taxpayers Union. Hey, Maddie, thanks for being with us. Chris, good morning. Good morning. What was your reaction to Bernie Sanders? weighing in on the movie and and mm -hmm. how folks who work for Disney should make a profit. Right. Well, Bernie Sanders has never seen a success story he doesn't want to immediately dismantle, right? I mean, that's my reaction to what Bernie has to say here. Let's consider the facts. Disney employs over 200,000 people worldwide. Those employees benefit from the franchise's success, whether it be in movies, whether it be in their theme parks. But consider this. Last year alone, Disney awarded $1,000 bonuses to over half its employees and expanded educational opportunities, investing back in that workforce. Bernie wants to tell you that that big business is bad, but it's because Disney has been so successful, can generate these types of profits year over year that it's able to do that. What do you make of Abby, Abigail Disney, the granddaughter of the co-founder of Roy Disney, calling Iger's paycheck insane? I think it's certainly worth having a debate about whether or not CEOs are properly uh, uh, justified in the compensation that they're getting. But I do think that it's a false uh, narrative to say that if a CEO is getting paid too much, employees aren't getting paid enough. I mean, look, Forbes on its list last year said that Disney was one of the top rated companies to work for in the world. It's number the, the number one most highly regarded company in the world, according to that list. Mm -hmm. So Disney clearly is doing something right. And I think that the bigger picture here is if you look at something like Endgame, that record that has broken uh, this weekend, it broke previous records also held by Disney. The success today of a company pays for the growth tomorrow. Uh, people who are working for Disney now are able to build not just jobs, but careers. Politicians talk a lot about jobs, but these businesses are really busy investing in people. And the certainty they need to do that is because we have an environment where they're finally able to make those investments in their workers rather than being concerned about half-baked ideas like this coming out of the government to tax them or to take away that revenue. Yeah, and we also have to remember that shareholders are the ones that make some of these decisions. I heard Eric Metaxas on Shannon Bream's show last night, and he was saying those folks who think that the wealthy of the wealthy should give money to those who don't make as much money, he called it robbery. So that's robbing people who have worked really hard and giving to people that are maybe not as willing to work as hard. Well, listen, the U.S. Treasury is always accepting checks. So anyone who tells you that it's more patriotic <laughs> to pay more money to check. the U.S. government, they are able to write a check any day they would like, and the U.S. Treasury will accept that. So I encourage folks, if they feel that's their patriotic yeah. duty, they can go right ahead and do that. And who wants uh, CEOs? They make a ton of money, but that comes with a lot of responsibility. They're managing 200,000 individuals. Thank you so much for being with us, Maddie. Thanks, Ainsley. Good to see You're you. welcome. All right, chaos in the caravan. As fights are erupting outside of a shelter in Mexico, Griff Jenkins was there watching. 